my topic uh, today is uh, on community engagement, though I will be talking about uh, stories and uh, what does it mean uh, for us uh, at IPLA and for you in your countries. So on my slide you see the branding of the library map of the world and this is because uh, uh, I've been working for the library map of the world since its first day and the library map of the world is very young. It, has, it is only one year old, uh, exactly <laughs> one year old. And uh, so, and all that I will present and talk to you today is uh, based on our experience during the first year. So let's uh, move forward. So before I actually start to dig into the topic, I just uh, want to talk a little bit about why. And uh, what you see now on the screen uh, are those six uh, sustainable development goals uh, that will be on the agenda for the United Nations high-level political forum next year. And this is a huge, huge opportunity for us uh, to do advocacy uh, through storytelling on how libraries actually make a contribution in achieving those goals. That's why it is very important that we prepare good and we prepare for the next year and have uh, enough that, uh, a survey on examples how libraries actually are contributing to achieving those sustainable development goals. And that survey uh, was an inspiration for us at IFLA headquarters to actually include also stories as part of the library map of the world. Through that first survey, we received hundreds of stories from libraries all over the world, uh, which, which highlighted clearly the need and willingness of librarians to actually tell wider world about things that are, they are doing uh, in their countries and to show this to their stakeholders and use this uh, in their advocacy. So, and I will just go back a little bit. And uh, here on the screen, what you can see actually is the actual screenshot from the library map of the world. And you may wonder why we only have f very few areas highlighted in green color here on the map. So we have actually at the moment uh, just four stories, and I will explain you why. So what is the challenge? Uh, and this challenge actually clearly came out of the global vision discussion. And what you see on the screen uh, is very familiar for you now already. Uh, these are opportunities number three and opportunity number six from global vision summary report, right? So the challenge with storytelling for the library map of the world is one, that success is perceived differently by different stakeholders, it's perceived differently by us librarians, differently by our library users, differently by government, differently by your funders or private partners. And the challenge with storytelling for advocacy uh, uh, through sustainable development goals is basically that we need to find a way how we can use the language of our decision makers so that they better understand what is it, that contribution, right? So it is obvious that we need to understand our community needs better so that we actually can design those services and provide services that make sense for those communities. And when they make bigger sense, then we can also uh, demonstrate bigger, uh, bigger contribution and bigger impact. So we need to ensure that our stakeholders understand our value and impact. And uh, now I will be talking about what we propose can be used as a framework for that, uh, to switch our thinking from, from how we tell stories now to how we could actually better do it. So what is the main problem? 
and it's a, it is a, a challenge all over the world, in all regions, and, and it's the challenge that when we speak about our services, our activities, and things that we achieved in our libraries, we use what I can call library perspective. And it's not bad. We are proud of what we did, and we want to tell a wider world about the good things that happened in our libraries, right? But to really be able to use those stories in advocacy, and when you do advocacy, you talk to your decision makers and different types of stakeholders, right? We need to use the community perspective. Those decision makers, they also work with communities, and this is the common point through which we can talk in the same language. Uh, you see three questions on the screen, and I will come back to those questions through my presentation today. And these are questions why, what, and so what. So we are all very good at telling wider society about what we did in our libraries, describing how we implemented a new service or how we engaged with the new target group, which is underserved in our community. But what we sometimes lack is bigger focus of why we actually did it. And this is a more detailed explanation of your community, where your library is located, about the challenges that this community face. That explains why you actually have that particular service in your library, right? And another, the greatest challenge that we all have is related to demonstrating impact. And uh, impact, when I say impact, I mean, at least in the widest sense at this moment, I mean both qualitative and quantitative data and evidence that our stakeholders may want to see and may be able to connect to their agendas. So when we talk about impact, and here is what I want to say, that it is not complex. This is the simplicity in that complexity of impact measurement because there are things that we can measure in terms of quantity and quality. When we talk about impact, and this is also that we are talking with those who's, who are submitting their, their stories to the library map of the world, it all starts with knowledge and understanding. If your library is implementing a training program, you can measure how the knowledge and understanding or competencies and abilities of those participating in those programs are changing. So this is simple. This would lead later into changes in their behaviors, and it's because they have a new skill. They can do things better. They can do things faster, easier, and that's, that would lead to changes in attitudes and perceptions also. But our end goal is quality of life. The changes of quality in quality of life of those people we are serving is what is what we are looking to have described in every story that is published on the library map of the world. And this is also the, the quality of life, improvement of quality of life in our communities or on individual users is something that through which we can connect to that contribution that we are making to achieving uh, to achieving sustainable development goals. So in blue, you see in the bottom things like education. So this quality can be changed in terms of employment. You may influence innovation and creativity in your community. You may influence health, and it also will affect equality. These are just a couple of examples on the slide, and we could continue with many more slides through which we, we could show that contribution. So, we see therefore 
the community engagement is actually the key. And the community engagement from the beginning until the end. And here I want to refer back to what I found useful in my previous work in impact measurement in Latvia is uh, actually comes from Canada, from the Working Together project, uh, which has been developed already quite a while ago. If you want to Google it, you, you may find it uh, by using community-led service planning model. And this is uh, an adapted version of that. So you see the same three questions that we are looking for. Is why, what, and so what? So the first is about community assessment and needs identification. So and it actually is, consists of two parts. So we want to know what our community is all is about. So we look outside our library. We look what are other organizations who we could partner actually with, maybe who have the same goals. And then we identify the needs of those underserved or specific target groups in our community that are in need, right? And when, in, when it comes to storytelling, that we want to have that short description that explains where is this community located, who are the people living there, what are the problems people face every day. It's because when your story goes online on the library map, uh, there will be other people reading that, that from many different parts of the world. They will know nothing about your community or your library and why it does things. So the next step is what, which actually is the actual service development and delivery. I will not focus on that because in storytelling we don't have problem with that. But then measurement and evaluation is, is that third question that we want to have an answer to. And when we talk about the community engagement, we will not spend time for this today, but this model actually uh, involves engagement of community members and groups, not only in the first stage of community needs assessment, but also goes until the end, including planning services together with the community so that they better m meet the need and also asking after that your community members what it actually did it make a change for them and what it means for them simple right <laughs> here it gets uh, even more simple <laughs> so the three same questions on your right the actions that we talked as a framework is on your left and in the middle is something through which we want to explain the difference between just collecting performance statistics or, for example, if you had a training program collecting how many participants were there or what was the percentage of community reached, but going beyond that. And for stories, we want to have some evidence of outcomes. So what happened to those people who learned how to use a computer in your library, or who learned how to write a CV. What happened after they left your library? This is what we are looking forward in storytellings. And this is uh, what matters to our stakeholders, because that's what they are interested. They're not that much interested in details of how you made it, but what happened after that. So, Therefore, we say that a compelling evidence-based story consists of three parts. And for the library map of the world, these are three minimum requirements for the narrative part of the story. First is community focus, then the description of what you did, which is very short, and then that description of impact on the community. So, you may know that uh, we produced what we call a storytelling manual. The full title of it is Libraries and the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, a storytelling manual, uh, which is really a practical guide and it's our first attempt to describe, to explain and describe those things and to help you to tell your stories better. 
this guide is available for download on IFLAS main site as well as on the library map of the world and is organized in, in several chapters, but the most important of them is actually how to tell your story. It will lead you through these three questions that I mentioned, uh, which is what, why, what, and so what, and will help you to prepare your story so that it has those crucial elements and interesting things like a catchy title, it has a strong opening, and as you know, that people will not read more than two paragraphs until they get bored if it's not, didn't catch their attention yet, right? So we want to say the main things at the beginning. Effective scene setting is where we have described that context of our community and where our service fits and what is the actual contribution. A very clear narrative and the meaningful ending. And the meaningful ending is the, the, that part that talks about the impact and contribution and clearly demonstrates the relation to achieving the <coughs> sustainable development goals. So that was a short introduction that I prepared for you today. And uh, I am happy to really talk to you more about it. Uh, I will be spending a lot of time at this Congress in IFLA booth, uh, which will be open today. And we have a couple of printouts of the storytelling manual and we prepared other materials uh, that, uh, that we can use to, to really talk through your individual cases. And uh, let's meet online as well. Thank you very much.